From the Battery Street Studios of KCBS Radio in San Francisco, I'm Matt Pittman, and this is Bay Current for Wednesday, November 10th. Commuters traveling on the East Shore Freeway, in particular between about Emeryville and Berkeley, have no doubt noticed the junk, the trash, laying around the sides of the freeway, sometimes making its way into the path of traffic. Much of it is generated from the unhoused, the homeless, living around the freeway, under the overpasses, and sometimes even along the sides of the East Shore Freeway. And thanks to the reporting of KCBS Radio's Matt Bigler, something is finally being done to clean up the freeway and make it a little safer. It's a KCBS Radio exclusive, and KCBS reporter Matt Bigler has been on the story. So this is a cleanup effort on a stretch of I-80 that folks who drive through it have definitely noticed all the trash. And we're not talking about just debris that sort of collects. We're talking about what just looks like people have been littering indiscriminately for some period of time. It turns out that that's kind of what's going on. Give me the, give me the latest on, on where we're talking about, Matt, and why it's been so messy. Right. So this is a long 80, the East Shore Freeway, and mostly the exits in Emeryville and Berkeley. We're talking about Ashby University, all of those areas uh, where there are on-ramps and off-ramps. It's kind of a no-man's land, which means it's anybody's land. And what has happened is homeless folks have been living there for some time. That's not news. And also not really news is that they create a lot of garbage and some of that trash ends up on the freeways. We have received a lot of complaints from drivers who say the garbage is getting onto the on-ramps. In some cases, for example, shopping carts will roll down and then they have to swerve to avoid those to get on the freeway. That's a major problem. So the news is we are decided to do a story about this, reached out to Caltrans to find out what the plan was to clean up this stuff. There were several delays in getting a response from Caltrans. And then finally, yesterday, we were told by Caltrans, we are going to do a litter abatement blitz along I-80 to take care of this stuff and maybe even put up some fencing so that the debris from these encampments doesn't get onto the on and off ramps. So... As a result of doing this story and reaching out for a request for comment, something is finally happening. Wow. Where is it specifically coming from? And you mentioned the homeless that are living near the freeways. Is there one or two larger encampments that are primarily responsible for the the garbage? I don't know if there's one encampment that is the main culprit. It's just everywhere. I spent the day driving around that area with one of the the people, one of the Emeryville residents, actually, who's been complaining about this a lot. And she led me to some of the worst spots. And it just does seem like it is everywhere along the on-ramps and off-ramps on 80. And when you drive through there, you see things like shopping carts, like I mentioned, tarps, various and sundry debris. Mm -hmm. There are tents. Uh, so it's not like a major, in, it's not a large encampment, but people just live throughout that area. Uh, there's also a forested area where there are tents and, and ropes uh, set up. Uh, I saw one stop sign where there was just, there was uh, at least a half dozen shopping carts just sitting there. And the wow. issue of cleaning up the encampments is complicated because there are lots of different agencies that get involved. You have to make sure that people's possessions are taken care of. But that's not really what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is the debris that gets onto the roadway and causes a traffic hazard. That's what people have been complaining about. And that's what our story was about. What is Caltrans going to do about that garbage that you could hit while you're trying to get on the freeway? How were those large things making their way onto the freeway in the first place? Well, the way that 80 is structured, the on and off ramps are on a slope to either get on or off. Uh, And so where the folks are living, if if something isn't secured, then there's a chance it could roll downhill. And if that happens, then it gets into mm. the freeway. So we're talking about some uh, people-made contours that have created inclines. And if, you know, gravity, being the way it is, will cause something with wheels to go downhill, and at the bottom of that hill is the road. So that's where the problem is. And if you hit a shopping cart, you're talking about some serious damage to your car, Um And there are also people involved. I mean, people walk back and forth in that area. So there's also a danger to uh, hitting folks that live there. 
Well, look, you can also get in just as much hazard trying to avoid some of these things. You know, you see something, you're going 60 miles an hour, and let's be honest, a lot of us are going faster than that. You're automatically thinking as the driver, yeah, I got to get out of the way, and you may not have time to check, you know, what's in the lane next to you, or, Mm -hmm. you know, there's the the potential for collisions and and other accidents. Yeah, and there are tents right next to the roadway. I mean, you don't have to swerve that far out of the way to maybe drive into somebody's living room. So... That's uh, that's another issue. I mean, it's not a good place for people to be living on many levels, and one of which is the safety from being separated from traffic. So this comes down to Caltrans, not Emeryville or not Berkeley. How does how does it get delegated deciphering who is responsible for these cleanup efforts? Well, Caltrans is the state designated maintainer of the highways and byways, the freeways in this case, and and we're talking about. 80, I-80, uh, from about the maze to Highway 4. And they have, as far as I could tell, been neglecting that area because it really is kind of a mess to force these people to be moved. And so as long as Mm -hmm. they are not causing problems, they've been sort of allowed to stay. People have looked the other way. But it's gotten to the point where there's so much debris, it it looks like you're driving through a city dump. I think that's the way I described it in one of my my reports today. Uh, It really is a huge eyesore. Um, Several football fields full of garbage. And the garbage is big enough so that when it gets on the roadway, it can cause a major problem. So Caltrans finally Mm -hmm. uh, told us today, we are aware of the issue. Actually, I should say they told us yesterday, we're aware of the issue Uh, And here's what we're going to do about it, I think, because so many people have complained and because we decided to do a story on KCBS. So next week, they are going to start this uh, blitz, as they call it, a litter abatement blitz, to clean up some of those areas between the maze and uh, Highway 4 and also monitor to see if any fencing is needed. Because I think most of these problems with garbage getting onto the roadway could be solved if there were some more fences just to keep the shopping carts from rolling downhill. This litter abatement blitz what a what a i mean what a bureaucratic phrase by the way <laughs> nicely done that is that is government speak if i have ever heard it but uh, it sounds like this is just right now about the cleanup effort this isn't about relocating or right. or interfering with the the folks who are living off the side of the freeway at this point right 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 because there are undecided court cases about whether or not people can legally live yeah. in areas that are the public's property. I mean, this property does belong to the collective society, the government. And so if they can't find a place to live somewhere else, then there are arguments to be made that, well, you can pitch a tent here. It's not very safe. It's not necessarily healthy from what I could tell, but it, it's also not illegal. There, But again, the courts mm. are still deciding this. And the other thing is, if once you decide to move people from an area then you have to take care of all of their possessions it, because that really literally is their living room. It's their their tent and their backpack yeah. and whatever else they've accumulated. It's their stuff. And so you have to make sure that all that stuff gets tagged, bagged, categorized, and there have been lawsuits over how that has been poorly done. So I think Caltrans is not messing with any of that. They're going to clean what they can along the roadway and maybe add some fencing so that at least drivers are not hitting this stuff as they try to get on the freeway. You mentioned the volume of garbage, refuse, debris that they'll be removing. Uh, you had mentioned at one point uh, uh, football fields worth of, of of collection, right? The the volume of, of the stuff is, is what, I guess, interests me because I go back to a, a few years ago uh, in a different life, working at a, a similar job to, to this one, up in Seattle with Cairo Radio. We're both Cairo Radio alums. Shout so out to Cairo. Shout out to Big Current Podcast. Uh, I spent a, a few nights one week with uh, the Union Gospel Mission and their sort of overnight outreach patrol. And, and we went along a couple of ride alongs with uh, Seattle PD. One of the things that always stands out to me the most, always, will always stand out to me, was as I've got you know my camera and I'm trying to just grab some B roll to you know put together some you know, footage for the digital components to our on-air stories. And I mean, we, we had pretty great access to some folks that were living in this encampment uh, underneath one of the ramps on the West Seattle Bridge. And 
so then I see this this area. They had this area um, underneath one of the lower parts of one of the 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 on ramps onto the West Seattle Bridge, and this is where the members of the this particular encampment would take their garbage. And and so one of the cool parts of the story I thought was how these residents of this encampment policed themselves in keeping it clean and keeping their area clean to be sort of responsible neighbors and to be good stewards of this small piece of land that they were able Mm -hmm. to erect tents on that the city had given them. And they were being good stewards and taking their garbage and their uh, discardings to a specific site location I get close to it and I'm trying to, you know, just get some footage of it. And one of the SPD officers says, hey, man, don't get any closer. Just stop. And I'm like, why? What's going on? I thought like maybe there was something going on, like maybe someone I didn't see had, you know, I don't know. And he's like, oh, that stuff is toxic. Like that is, mm. that's bad news because oh, you obviously you have, you have human waste, you have, uh, you know, feminine products, you have also, uh, you know, drug paraphernalia. Uh then you these are a lot of these folks unfortunately aren't terribly healthy they've there's you know sickness and untreated you know illness and there's obviously the problem of addiction right and so you've got all these needles well then the rats and the raccoons get in there as well and it just creates this sort of toxic stew if you will and he's like that stuff is bad news we have to send in these specifically trained units to go in and, and clear this thing out every every week or so. Like our mm-hmm. garbage dudes can't go in there and do this. This sounds like if you're undertaking a massive cleaning operation like this or a cleanup operation like this, that this isn't just as simple as guys, you know, in orange vests and, and hard hats and gloves going out there and picking up garbage. Did you get any indication about what the process is for collecting this stuff and then the permanent disposal of it, where it goes? Uh, the short answer is no. Caltrans hasn't detailed how they're going to do this. But I, I think, like you said, it's not going to happen right away because it has to be done in the right way. And it is kind of like a toxic yeah. a toxic waste site that you have to clean up very carefully. Yeah. You described it very well. I mean, that you could, you could use that description on almost any homeless situation, probably in America. I don't want to generalize too much here, but it happens over and over again where a few people start living together. And sometimes they can police the area pretty well, but all it takes is a few, right? You have a few that are not maybe mentally able to take care of themselves and their stuff, and then it just sort of mushrooms. Um, I did talk to a couple of homeless folks who were under one of the overpasses, and this didn't make it into the story. This is is the director's cut now. Uh, And he said, (laughs) you know, we try to keep ourselves clean and we tell each other, please pick up your stuff. Otherwise, they're going to kick us out of here. Now, not everybody follows right. those rules because it really is sort of a do what you want to do. We're all illegal here. So who's going to tell anybody else what to do? And that that was the sentiment that I got from people who were cooking breakfast of sausages under the one of the 80 overpasses. It's an interesting story, Matt. And it sounds like uh, we got a little bit of work done for uh, the folks uh, that live alongside, uh, at least near the travel, that, that area, uh, that part of uh, I-80, the East Shore Freeway. Uh, through Berkeley, and it's just what? It's just a, a hair north of the MacArthur Maze, right? Right. That, we're talking, that long kind of straight stretch of I-80. Right, from the maze and then all of those exits, basically, from Emeryville, yeah. Berkeley, uh, and all those cities up until Highway 4. The The worst parts really are in, in Berkeley and Emeryville. Good work. Thank you as always, Matt Bigler. Much appreciated. Sure thing. Thanks, Matt. Thanks again to my KCBS Radio colleague, Matt Bigler. You can read more on his story at kcbsradio.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Bay Current podcast. You can find Bay Current on Apple and Google Podcasts, on the Odyssey app, or just about anywhere you listen. And you can catch every episode on YouTube. There's a link in the show notes. That's it for today's Bay Current. I'm Matt Pittman. We'll chat again with you tomorrow.